Here's a brief video on some temperatures, uh, voltages, um, timings, that kind of thing. Uh, we're using a Sabertooth 990FX R2.0 um, AMD board, obviously. Um, actually, here, let me just show you guys uh, this here. Okay, so here's our clock, 4.9 gigahertz. Uh, it's an FX4100 which has a base clock of 3600 megahertz or 3.6 gigahertz. Um, I'm using four sticks of XPG V1, a data RAM. Um, it was a good price. I would prefer to have two eight sticks. That's another story, but here's our little processor right here. And we have a couple of 7850s. Uh, Crossfire. I have the Crossfire currently off though. So we'll go back over here. Um, let's have a look at some temperatures. Um, so here we go. Um, the GPUs right now, I have the fans turned basically right down. Uh, the other card uh, is actually, I could probably turn that fan down a touch too. But uh, our voltages are slightly up. Base voltage is uh, 0 0.825. And our original CPU core voltage was 1.28 out of the box. So I have that capped at 1.44, which gets us our 4.9 gigahertz. Um, the highest clock I've had on this was 5.3. However, it's not stable. My 4.9 is totally stable, it's uh, a daily use. Uh, to give you an idea just how, how stable this is, um, right here guys, we've been up for eight days and three hours without a reboot, so in my world that's stable. Uh, back over to sensors here for a second. Um, I prorated the temperatures here, I offset them, uh, I believe was 20, 23 degrees. Yeah, 23 I offset it. Um, because of the values that come off of there, I'm almost for certain they're probably delta values. Um, so what I've done is basically added room temperature on top of that. Um, over here on display, let's go have a look at the GPUs. Um, so GPU number one clocked at 975 megahertz. Um, down oops, over here for the first card, uh, base frequency is 860. Eight sixty. And if we switch over to our second card, Same thing. Nine seventy five on card one, nine seventy five on card two. Now, something uh, I should probably maybe just quickly touch on um, for some of you guys that are cross firing. Uh, it's very important to have the same clocks. Uh, two cards with the similar clocks will cause problems. Um, I personally, I use a Trix utility uh, down over here. The Trix utility, in certain circumstances, you'll want it to start after your closed catalyst control center starts, else you will have problems. Uh, some have problems, I don't. Uh, it just tends to be that Trix loads faster than CCC does and some of the values I guess that have to be imported or are taken from there if Trix loads before that's where your glitch starts to happen um, let's go back here for just one second guys uh, we'll touch on the motherboard here um, so here's our clock up here uh, our multiplier is at 22 and a half so 
our base frequency of 200 multiplied by that gives us 4500 and the additional portion of our overclock comes from our front side bus. So as you can see um, for basically if you shop around you could probably buy this processor for like 40 bucks right now. I bought it about a year ago for 80 uh, with a heat sink unused brand new in a box. Um, I can't stress to you the value in this chip 95 watt TDP uh, this thing kicks ass for a cheap chip uh, good motherboard good power supply obviously help I use a DSP oh, thermal take 750 watt single rail um, which has a USB interface so that you can monitor temperatures and all that kind of thing so uh, room temperature or intake air temperature on that power supply is 19 degrees. Um, go over here, we can look at amps. And can switch that so you can get like a history. Your efficiency, which normally as you put the supply under more load, the efficiency goes up. So currently, um, doing this video and everything, as you can see, about 200 watts um, where am I going here let's go back over here for a second that's volts here's our volts so let's switch over to our 12 volt rail and you can see how many amps we're pulling it's a 62 amp single rail so about 25 percent of the supply once I put on a game and that kind of thing, we hit about uh, anywhere between 330 and 350 watts in crossfire. Peak sometimes 400 watts, believe it or not. So you're not pulling as much as you might think. A 500 watt will get you, uh, you know, going if you're on a tight budget and that kind of thing. However, I always recommend buying a power supply that's slightly larger than your actual needs. Um, it's, you know, sort of the analogy of uh, imagine, uh, you know, buying a truck to haul around some dirt and you buy the truck just large enough to haul around the dirt on a flat road and then all of a sudden you hit a hill, you're screwed. You don't have enough power to get up the hill. Uh, that can happen as well. So, you know, meaning uh, not under a 3D load or anything, your computer's running fine, all of a sudden you go to, you know, launch a YouTube video or play a game and you get that blue screen of death. You can hear the fan engaging in the back now. A little bit, it'll come off and on as it finds that spot. Um, because of the um, the DPS, it actually uses Java, so which puts the uh, starts to put the card under a little load, as well as me running this uh, screen capturing software to show you guys this stuff. Um, but as you can see, everything is uh, fluid like um, when you you know to do things on the computer and that kind of thing um, everything is actually very 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 fast um, here's our experience score I used to have a 7.9 on the hard disk um, that's been a learning curve as well my first SSD uh, I'm on my third one now but this one was a V300 Kingston 120 gig uh, budget drive 450 read 450 write 85,000 input outputs uh, per second was 7.9 and then I partitioned it into two drives actually to uh, have a dual bootable machine Windows 7 and Windows 8 um, so I noticed that performance after that as far as the Windows experience score went uh, sort of went down a touch um, RAM that I have in there as I mentioned is 1600 megahertz I have a couple sticks of uh, Corsair 1866 which I have slapped in a uh, an old gigabyte board um, that I'm just setting up so I have intentions on pulling those sticks out and actually putting them probably into this machine which will probably get me a little better of an overclock than I have now um, but uh, aside from that we'll go back here for a second back to the uh, to the motherboard thing um, just want to show you guys something here um, right here so uh, here's our here's our maximum bandwidth 
uh, was originally just slightly under 20,000. Um, the RAM, as I mentioned, is uh, 1600 megahertz, so a uh, single channel clock is 800. Uh, with our overclock, it's actually 871, so you'd multiply this number by 2, which gives us the effective clock of 1742. So let's go over to the overclock for a second here, have a look at that. Um, here's our overclock. Our front side bus here, now if you'll notice uh, the uh, original was 200 megahertz, uh, which is a 9% overclock. Um, we'll round that up to 18 just for argument's sake. Our DRAM to front side bus ratio is 24 to 6. If we reduce that ratio, it's 4 to 1. So meaning for every 1 megahertz that I put up this front side bus, we are going to gain 4 megahertz of speed on our memory bus. So yes, I know it sounds confusing. Uh, let me show you maybe over... Oh, where am I here? Memory, let's go back here. here. So this number here, um, the original clock was 200. So if we subtract 200 from that, which leaves 18. 18 times 4 is 72. So the real clock of 800 plus the 72 gives you 872. And then multiply by 2, and there's your 1742, or 1 1.74 uh, gigahertz uh, clock for your memory. Uh, aside from that, that's uh, so yeah, here we are. We're eight and a half days on the little FX 4100 on the Sabertooth board. Um, like I said, a good motherboard, a good power supply, and you know, this chip you can actually probably even go further with it. Um, like I said, this is uh, I'm running two of these, I've got almost an identical rig in my living room to this um, different liquid cooler, uh, different case, and that kind of thing, but almost similar performance. This one's actually slightly faster than that one. Um, but I attribute that to the memory that I'm using in this because the one in the living room I'm actually using very cheap A data memory which is only 1333 megahertz which I could probably overclock and probably get 1600 out of anyway. But uh, hope you guys found, uh, found this video interesting and thanks for watching.